we have we have already seen practice number four in some way because uh, practice number four is the textual level of the analysis. And we, uh, in the practice number three, where we, or two, where we explained the introduction of Atlas TI, we saw more, of the, more, more or less of the, more, most of the things that we are going to see today. So, the kind of revision. This practical submission, you have two weeks to do these practical submissions. I mean, not this week, but next week. So, and you don't need to put this in the in the um, control in control number one. So, what are we going to do? Textual analysis. Let's going to think about this. We have already talked about this, but in, in textual analysis, what we are going to do is like a. And I, I like doing some kind of analogies in each of these practices. We are going to be, in this class, astronomers. We are going to see the sky. We are going to see the different stars, constellations, and so on. What a, a person what, what a, a, a person that likes doing these activities do the first time they arrive to a place. They don't use the, the telescope. What they do is to... Uh, look at the sky to identify the, 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 the main element and afterwards when they ha they have a clear idea that this point is good uh, to 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 see the, the the different stars they put the, the telescope and they start looking at the specific constellation so this is what we are going to do in the textual analysis we are doing this kind of first view to the sky and to do that, we are going to use quotes and memos. We did this last week. This was the, the textual level of analysis. What I told you, this is kind of the underlying, the underlying of the most important, of the most important ideas. But it's important. My question is, if in the first level, I need to underline the most important ideas, how? I decide when an idea is important or not. Well, in our case, if I'm reading the transcription of an in-depth interview of a customer that came to my uh, restaurant, I'm looking by basically for the customer experience factors. One, two, three, four, and five. So, in the first reading of this interview, the transcription, I'm going to look for ideas that speak about um, physical or spatial environment, staff, processes, waiting times, these kind of things. Why? Because these things uh, are going to condition the customer experience. If a person says, okay, the food was very good, but I we had to wait too much time to, well, so this, this is a negative thing that is going to condition, that is going to be related to a negative uh, customer experience. So we are going to underline the ideas that we think are related to customer uh, experience. Also, we are going to uh, underline also the ones that are related to the customer journey map. So whenever I read a sentence that I think is important, in my mind, I have to think that it, it, this, this sentence occurs before, during, or after. If I can have this in mind, it's going to be the next step is going to be easier. Why? Because in the first level, we are just underlining. We are using quotes or citations. But in the second level, what we are going to do in some weeks from now, what we are going to do is uh, to categorize, we are going to create codes. When you told me, do we have to create codes? Not yet. You know what? So we are going to put to these sentences that are underlined. We are going to think where, well, what is the name I put to each of them? For example, if I found find some sentences that are related to the staff, I re re, re read all these sentences and I categorize. This idea is related to the staff. This idea, physical evidence. This idea, processes. 
And in the last one, in one month from now, we are going to try to make, find relationships between the different codes. But this is something that is going to happen later. Just for you to have an idea of what we are doing and what we are going to do in the whole semester, this is what we have done. All this complex thing is as simple as that. In the first stage, in the first practices, we have uh, specified what we are analyzing. Research questions, objectives, whatever. Contextualization. In the second step, what we do is to decide which technique are we using. In the interview, focus group, whatever. In the third stage, oh, well, here we gather the information, and we are going to analyze the information in three levels. The one we are going to see today, that is the textual level, the conceptual level, and the interpretive level, or the organizational level. And at the end, we are going to write the study. We are now here. We are going to create quotes. In some weeks, we are going to create quotes, and later we are going to create some um, networks. But this is going to be later. In the, in the example, for example, the same example I, I brought you some weeks ago, remember I told you, I created a fake interview, it's not a real one, but it's supposed to be. And in this uh, interview, I interview um, the manager of a rural hotel. And I, I asked him about different. So one of the things was the, um, well, the customer experience. One of the things was customer experience. And in this example, you can use these three levels, of course you can, or you can use the factors, I don't care. Uh, in this example, we asked them, or ask, we asked him about the customer experience and also the different levels of the customer experience. In this case, we brought this also from the book of Al-Qaeda. Al Al-Qaeda, um, Jose Carlos al -Qaeda says that uh, when we are talking about customer experience, there are three levels. Some companies focus on one level, some other companies focus on, on two levels, and some others focus on three levels. And you are going to understand what I mean. Transactional level are those companies that only focus on tangible things. Product, price, cost. So in this one, I would put, for example, Piedmont Valencia. What they, 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 they operate at the minimum cost, minimum price, minimum service. So you do, you, your own, do most of the things that someone had to do. Now welcome to your, to your table to order. You do it alone, you go to play there. You, so transactional level. Usually companies that work only in this transactional level, they reach a maximum customer experience, a limited one, because they are losing things. Now one go to the Tien Montalito because they are very nice. You go to the Tien Montalito because they are cheap and they have variety. But if you want to improve, you can include more things, relational things. For example, you can have a restaurant that also serves Montaditos, but they come to your, to, to your table, they recommend you if you don't understand. You are including staff there. So the customer experience of this second level it's going to be better because it includes a good relationship, price quality, but also relationship. And the last level is the experiential level. I'm sure if you like marketing, I'm sure you understand that nowadays we don't sell products, we don't sell services, we sell experiences. Everyone sells experiences. And this is not true. Everyone wants to sell experiences. But the word experience is a lot. Experience means many things. It means feelings, means. And experience also means that you have achieved this and this, that you are offered a good service or a good product, that you have a good relational level. And at the, the last step is the experience. Sometimes, unfortunately, nowadays, a lot of companies focus more on the experience 
that are the important things. The experience is the last thing. The last thing. The, it's important, is it? It is. But if, if, if you are, they are sending you experience, but the relationship level, if they don't they take into account the relational level at the end, not an experience. So this could be an example of code or different levels of analysis. Transactional, relational, experiential. In the same way that when we use um, environmental space or um, spatial environment, processes and stuff, you can do the analysis in this level or you can do it in this level. So I'm going to give you some examples. This is, the, of course, the script we use uh, to gather the information. And taking into account this idea, when I read the transcription, I'm going to look for ideas that are related to transactional level, if the person is talking about the price, the quality, relational level, when the person is talking about the relationship with the company, the, I don't know, for example, um, the um, waiter, if it's a restaurant, the person who check in or whatever, or the other experiential issue, more related to feelings. So what I do is to underline, what I'm going to do is to underline these ideas to create what is called quotation. In the first, in this textual analysis, we are going to just underline. We saw this in the first practice in Atlas TI. How to do this? I, I re explain. We can do it by clicking here, new entries, entities, or we can click specifically on the, there is one way by using the main menu here, or we can click the right button, select the sentence we want, click the right button, and, sorry, and create um, a free quotation. Here you see, create free quotation, and we can check if the citation was properly done because there is a, a, a blue element here. At the end, whenever we finish reading the whole uh, interview, the whole transcription, we are, we are going to find this. We are going to have many of them. These are quotations. As you see, there are no letters here. I haven't written codes yet. I could, but I haven't. We are going to do this next class. So, one important thing. Imagine. At the end of the semester, you are going to have many primary documents. In this example, there is only one here. So we are going to have, imagine this example, one, two, three, four, five quotations of the first primary document. But at the end of the semester, you are going to have two primary documents and one focus group. Three. So you are going to have three primary documents with elements. If you click on the on the menu here, this is the quotation manager, the manager. If you click here at the top of the of the, the slide of the screen, you are going to see this one, this slide. And this is basically all the different quotations you have created. As you see, from here, from 1.1 .1 to 1.10, they, these 10 first quotations are in the first primary document. And in the second one, 2.1, 2.5. Because I, I put, in this example, two primary documents. At the end of the semester, you are going to have three primary documents. So you are going to have some quotations related to the first primary document, some related to the second, and some related to the third. And finally, memos. Let's go into talk, to talk about memos. It's funny, the name. Memorandums is the, is the um, Latin word. Memos mean posits. When you are studying, what you do? Or when you are preparing your things, right? The lecturer says this is going to be in the exam. The lecturer says this is not important. Don't care about this element. 
whatever. So think of this. When we are doing a qualitative study and we are reading uh, in the interviews qualitative focus groups, we don't do all the activities in one week. Sometimes from the beginning of a project to the end, in the end, uh, we spend two, three months. So if at the beginning of the project or in the middle, we find interesting things, we can put positive because we are going to read this at the end and maybe this positive is useful. And this is what we are going to do. Uh, memos are basically positive. How many do you need to use? The, the ones you find useful. There's no number. The ones you find useful. For example, the, this program is a general program, this software. Uh, what we are going to use are memos. And these memos, we are going to call them in some way. One way is this. It's my recommendation to you, but you can use in a different way. The first one is called observation notes. Imagine observation notes. What an observation note means? It's a posit that uh, you're writing to know something in the future. Imagine you are, you have a transcription and there is a sentence that says uh, something that when you read this sentence, you think it's positive thing. But you know that when we are speaking, it's not the same the video than the transcription, because sometimes we can use the sarcasm. We can use different, we can say the same things, but depending on the way I say the thing, it could be positive or negative. So this observational note is something we use to show this kind of thing. For example, we are analyzing the, the uh, uh, an in-depth interview, and one person says something in a positive way, but by using the sarcasm. So we put observational note. Even this, this uh, sentence seems positive, but she's trying to say the opposite. Another thing, imagine a person is saying something, you ask him or her about the treatment of the manager in the restaurant. And you, you know that this person doesn't work, is not very comfortable or was not very comfortable within this kind of relationship with the manager, but he or she doesn't want to say. He feels nervous, he touched his hair, whatever. You feel the nervous in the video, but in the transcription, you cannot see this. So an observational note is, okay, I think this person said this, but maybe she wanted to say a different thing because she was never very nervous. Observational note. And there are many other types of observational notes. Okay. Uh, methodological notes. Imagine you, you have, a, for example, you gather one, uh, or you recorded one, um, one interview by using the computer. Zoom, Google Meet, whatever. You were in your office or whatever, and the other person was in a quiet place. But imagine a calm place, individual situation. But imagine the second one was you gather the information um, of the tram, for example, at the uh, tram uh, stop. Why? Because you were analyzing the tram. And the person was very nervous because she was waiting or he was waiting from the tram. And you find that the answer were very short because of that. And the last part of the interview was very short and messy because of the tram, because the tram was coming. So you can say, be careful with the answers of this interview because she was under pressure because of that. Obviously, a methodological note and many other notes. You can use as many notes as you want. Memos. How to create a memo? In the case of the memos, we do not select the text. Remember? When we were um, when we were doing the the creating the quotations, we selected the text and we click the right button and say create free quotation. But in the case of the memos, we do not create a memo specifically for a specific text. What we, what we do is to create a memo, create memo, and it offers something like this. This 
we write the name of the memo, for example, observational law, very ne nervous, or the individual was very nervous. And we can use this observational law whenever we need. It's not just, we don't need to write them only for a, any time we need it. We can create one and we can use it, we can associate. What we do is to create a memo, and whenever we have created a memo, the memo is kept here. This observational law, the person was very nervous. And imagine, imagine that I want to use this one here. This sentence was related to the nervous system of the individual. So what I do is to okay, click on this memo, drag it here, it's copied. And if I want to reuse this one many times, I don't need to write them every time. It's going to be there. So if I can write 10 memos, it's enough. I can use them whenever I need. Like a posit, you don't need to write a posit every time. You can write it one time and use it anytime you want. <clears throat> for example, if you are probably following a class and you have this posit, this is important for the exam. You have it there, and whenever I say something important, you use it. It's not necessary to write it many times. The memos. And uh, this is the example of a study last year. Uh, remember that this, uh, these numbers, in these numbers, they analyze the three elements, two in the interviews, one for the two. So in the transactional uh, level, they found 24 citations related to this transactional level, 12 citations related to the relational level, and 18 citations related to the experiential level. And when you say, what kind of citation are we talking about? I'm going to show you the examples. I'm going to translate because they are in Spanish, but there's no problem. In the first one, for example, well, for this practice, therefore, you need to create all the different quotations you want and the memos. You need to create a short table like this, summarizing the number of each type, and a second table giving some examples. For example, this group, in this group, they studied the Bibot landscape hotels. Bibot hotels are like small rooms in the mountain of Alicante, similar, similar to some of the things we are analyzing this year. And they found in the interviews some ideas that could be related to transactional level. For example, I'm going to say it in Spanish and afterwards in English. Mm. Ahí voy comparando un poco el precio con la actividad. Siempre intento comparar precio con calidad y cercanía a lo que quiero visitar. In the first interview, there was, there was one sentence that for them was related to the transactional level. And they say basically that this person used to compare price and quality before going to one place or another. Second one. Lo veo casi equilibrado, pero claro, es mucha pasta al final. The translation. So they say, what, are, what about the balance of price and quality? And they say, okay, it's quite balanced, but I think at the end it's quite money. It's quite a lot of money. Different ideas that are related to transactional level. The first one can, can, it came from interview one, interview two. <coughs> Relational level, some examples. Vino el chico en el carrito y nos llevó, parecía un carrito de golf, y nos llevó a la puerta de la habitación. Es más, luego el propio chico fue el que nos enseñó la habitación. They are talking about the individual, the person that came with a trolley, I think. Is it trolley? Like a golf? I don't know the name. Carrito, this kind of golf. How to say this in English? Carrito de golf in español. A ver. Golf cart. This one. He said. He, they are saying. Okay. The. The boy working for the hotel came with a golf cart of this. Uh, he came, he picked, he picked uh, up us, us up, and he came to the room, and he also uh, showed us the room. Relational level. An experiential level. 
and they say lo único malo que sí que la verdad fue una cosa fue muy mala fue el viento cogimos una, una esa habitación por el aniversario y pero sin saber que iba a ser un viento de 40 y la habitación se movía eh, está elevada del suelo y nos, eh, por unos andamios o algo así so in this case they say that they were a little bit scared about the wind because the day was very windy and they felt like well, some, somehow scared so as you say as you see They found some ideas related to transactional issues, price, quality, some ideas relation, related to relational issues, the relation with the individuals that deliver the service, and some ideas related to the feelings, how they felt, or things related to the feelings. And this is an example of the thing we need to do for practice number four. Here you have another, another example of the English group in the last year, Quotations, transactional, relational, experiential. Uh, they worked last year regarding 10 montaditos, and they found some quotes, some, uh, some uh, memos. And it's funny, and as you can see, 10 montaditos, the level of interaction between the client and the company is near to zero. And it makes sense. They found a lot of quotations. Regarding transactional level, makes sense. Relational, two, could be zero. Experiential, a lot. I think too much. Because the experience to go to a team of talentos is not that important. I don't know, when we say experiential level, we don't know if these quotes are positive or negative. Maybe they are negative, but there are. And here we have some ideas regarding the quotes. In this case, I have translated into English. Regarding the process, the environmental space, the locations, the hygiene, food. Okay, this is chapter, uh, practice number four. So what I want you to do, I want you to do really is to focus on 